Tomorrow is the court-ordered deadline for the federal government to reunite thousands of separated children with their parents. This issue landed in court because of the American Civil Liberties Union, and they filed a lawsuit on behalf of the families. Recently, the federal judge overseeing the case said that there's been, quote, great progress reuniting families since the Trump administration's zero-tolerance crackdown on illegal immigration. I got perspective on this from Bill Newman, director of the ACLU in Western Massachusetts, and Peter Vickery, a member of the Republican National Lawyers Association. I first asked Newman why the ACLU brought the case. This is in, from the judge's order of June 26th. Eleven weeks ago, plaintiffs leveled the serious accusation that our government was engaged in a widespread practice of separating migrant families and placing minor children who were separated from their parents in government facilities for, quote, unaccompanied minors. Attorney Vickery, let me bring you in here. And so what do you think uh, in reaction to the ACLU's decision to file this lawsuit? I welcome their decision to file the suit. So let me start by saying I'm very glad I live in a country that people flee to, not from and where the rule of law is still alive and well, so that when the ACLU, ACLU sues and wins an order, like it won from Judge Sabraw, the government complies. It didn't even appeal. It's making every effort to comply with Judge Sabraw's order for reunification. And you mean the July 10th deadline that was initially set? Uh, the, 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 the impending, the looming deadline uh, that is... Of July 26th. Correct. Because yes. there are two different deadlines at play. There was an earlier deadline which was missed for the children ages 5 and younger, and there are children uh, older than five who are subject to a deadline that's taking place this Thursday. Yes, and also to be clear, the ambition of the administration in enforcing the law consistently with its zero tolerance policy, I think, is an admirable ambition. However, what they didn't do beforehand was make sure that the reasonably foreseeable influx of children uh, had accommodation. They failed to do that. Um, and I think the president's decision on June 20th, his executive order for family reunification and end to the policy of, uh, of splitting families up is a wise one, but it should have happened before the zero tolerance policy was implemented. Attorney well, Newman? I just defer to the judge who said this, the unfolding events, the zero tolerance policy, the EEO, the executive order, and the DHS, the Department of Homeland Security fact sheet, serve to corroborate plaintiff's allegations. The facts set forth before the court portray, portray reactive governance, responses to address a chaotic circumstance of the government's own making. They belie measured and ordered governance, which is central to the concept of due process enshrined in our Constitution. In other words, our government and the Trump administration have been running roughshod over the most fundamental rights enshrined in the Bill of Rights of the United States. And I think all people who believe in due process and the rule of law should be appalled, not only at what the government did, but how badly they have managed to try to undo the chaos that the government created. They missed the deadline, and according to the most recent numbers that have been released, it seems unlikely that they are going to meet this new deadline is this not we'll a new deadline? We'll talk about that in a minute. I want to let Attorney Vickery have a chance to respond. Go yes, ahead. and I was appalled too, even back in 2014 when President Obama did something similar. And to his credit, I think, he had the candor to say that he was doing this as a deterrent. He warned migrant families that their families would be uh, disunited, that family disunity would be a likely and very foreseeable outcome of entering the United States illegally. And some district court judge said uh, deterrence is not a sufficient rationale for that kind of policy. So it was wrong then, and it was wrong this time. And so do you think we'll find a similar ruling from, from the court, given what you just said about the reaction from when the Obama administration tried something similar? Well, I think the Obama administration was very explicit about doing it as a deterrent, and the Trump administration has been very careful not to use deterrence as the rationale for this policy, the policy which has now changed, at least to the extent the zero tolerance policy now has this, this overlay of uh, family integrity being maintained. But I think the Trump administration is not going to fall into the trap that the Obama administration fell into of saying, we are doing this to deter illegal immigration or uh, people seeking asylum or refugees. And the numbers are, of course, going up. Just 27,000 last year from Venezuela alone. Of course, their port of entry was Miami, whereas most of the people crossing the southern border are fleeing violence and persecution in El Salvador, Honduras, Guatemala. Uh, but the numbers will keep increasing, and I think consistent enforcement of the law 
is key so long as we have the facilities to house the children who we can reasonably foresee will be brought across the border. The government was back in court on Monday, and uh, among some of the numbers that were brought up, the government says that 917 parents are, are either not eligible or not yet known to be eligible for reunification. And they're defining eligibility in four specific ways that I want to read out here. Um, the eligibility requirements, parents whom the government have not located, parents who are currently in criminal custody, parents with an alleged criminal history that would present a danger to the child, or parents who have a communicable disease. So I really want to focus on the last two, because if you're a parent today and you're not a migrant who've come across the border and you have a communicable disease, are you separated from your child because of that? I would defer to Mr. Vickery. I don't think there's any basis to do that. But if there's a public health, if there's a public health issue, uh, I, I'm not expert on public health issues and whether there is something that, that would be done to an American citizen uh, and if the government could separate the child from a parent because of a uh, danger to the child under ordinary circumstances under the law, then that would make some sense. If it's something being applied to uh, migrants and immigrants, then obviously it's objectionable. And this is not on a whim, let me add. This is not because the, uh, the Trump administration wishes to do this. It's the law. There's a statute that governs to whom DHS and HHS can release children. And it's the statute that sets forth those criteria. So is it, is it fair? Is it right? Well, that's a question for Congress. But I think the administration is taking care uh, to comply with the statute. So those four eligibility, that one specifically that I pointed out, is currently upheld by the law? I believe it's required by the law. I can't cite you the, the U.S. code in question. But the last that I read, that was one of the reasons why DHS has been somewhat faster. HHS is subject to certain requirements that they cannot release all children into uh, parental custody until uh, all those criteria are satisfied. And that's why you know, 200 plus parents with criminal convictions have not been reunited with their children and a similar number have, have I waived. I see you shaking your head. Well, so let you me disagree just read or? what the judge said in the order. Unless there is a determination that the parent is unfit or presents a danger to the child, or the parent affirmatively, knowingly, and voluntarily declines to be reunited with the child, A, defendants, that's the government defendants, must reunify all class members, those are the parents, with their minor children who are under the age of five within 14 days of entry of the order, and the government didn't do that. And the second part was defendants must reunify all class members with their minor children age five and above within 30 days of entry of the order. Again, subject to the caveats that the parent is not unfit or does not present a danger to the child. That's what the judge ordered, and that's what the government has failed to comply with again. I want to ask another question about the parents with the alleged criminal history. That stood out to me because in this country we all know the phrase innocent until proven guilty. So why would an alleged criminal history be a reason to separate parents? parent from child? Good question for Congress. I believe that's what the statute requires. And again, uh, unfitness or a communicable disease, these are not whims that uh, the administration is acting on. Uh, they're statutory requirements. Is it fair? Is it right? Good question for Congress. Let's move on to the deadline, which is Thursday, the 26th. Where do you see this case going? Substantial compliance is what I think Judge Sabro said he saw most recently. So I imagine that uh, the federal administration will either meet or come pretty darn close to meeting it. Of course, that doesn't solve the underlying problem. It's compliance with one judge's order. And uh, you know, some people on my side of the aisle take umbrage with uh, district court judges issuing orders that they think fly in the face of national policy. They see this as, as usurping the role of the federal government. That, that's not what's happening here. So putting that to one side, what this judge has done is issued a very well-reasoned order to deal with a particular set of circumstances where a policy was implemented poorly, not well thought out. And I think the government is doing its, uh, it looks like, according to the judge, they're doing their best to comply. Attorney Newman, where do you think it's going to go? Well, that's hard to say. I can't read the government's mind. I don't know really what efforts are being made. I don't know why they have failed so badly to meet the judge's order and the deadlines. I don't understand why the government separated children from their families and didn't even keep records in a lot of cases of where the children are, where the parents are. They just separated them and said, well, if they ever get back together, maybe they will, maybe they won't. And that's our national policy and practice. I don't know what they're going to do.